Hello and Randy, you're playing Farming Simulator 22 on the 36X Spring Creek map here and we are still working on plowing our large field here as of this episode. Um, as you can see from the time level, we've got 6 hours and 45 minutes remaining here according to uh, course play. Again, I don't know exactly how accurate that is, but it's probably fairly close. Uh, so yeah, we've got uh, two, uh, excuse me, two tractors working on this here. Uh, two T9 700s here pulling the uh, land all chisel plows. Uh, the other tractor is slightly ahead of this one. I'm not sure how this one got so much further ahead of them. They had them fairly close together, I thought, when we started them. But uh, this one's a good several several rows ahead of the other one. So, I mean, but, hey, whatever. Uh, I've always said I'm usually the further ahead or further apart they are, the better. Uh, it just keeps them out of trouble, right? They don't get near each other don't end up with uh, problems so but uh, yeah here's I'm not sure how that happened it's so much further apart from each other but, eh, whatever they're working six hours and 30 minutes remaining on this one so yeah I think we got what a good four oh, probably close to five hours four or five hours of plowing in here uh, between this episode and last episode of one uh, so we are making progress speaking of uh, progress by the way also got our case uh, quad track 715 here working on uh, 388 here or what halfway done with this field here. I was rather hoping to use this tractor for planting this episode, but oh my goodness, talk about it. <laughs> I don't know what's going on there. But anyway, that, uh, that steering wheel seems to be spazzing out just a little bit. Of course, I may be uh, struggling backing up here just a little bit. Anyway, we got uh, one field that is ready to be planted. Evan, so I figure we're going to get started on that here uh, this episode. Uh, we'll let the rest of the tractors uh, continue to uh, run. Uh, about the only thing we can plant here at the moment was oats. At least of the crops I want to plant. Anyway, we could do some sunflowers too, I suppose. Uh, we'll probably do that, but yeah, I don't, I don't think I really want to plant anything else. Uh, speaking of watch out, again, plant and plan here. Uh, definitely plan on putting soybeans on field 289, 290, 291. So that's what's going on in that field here. Uh, 386, I'm kind of leaning towards maybe, I don't know. Actually, we had corn on it last time. Do we want to do corn again? Eh, we'll see once. Kind of lean towards corn on one of the big fields here. And then we'll just uh, we'll plant something. <laughs> Emphasis on the something part here on the rest of the smaller fields here. So, anyway, let's go grab a tractor. Uh, I think I got some more tractors around here somewhere. Uh, whether or not we dare pull any of the big, or, well, any of the, I should say the really big planter, maybe. Hope we dare pull the really big planner with our current fleet of tractors or not. Ah, there we go. I knew I had another uh, T9 700 somewhere. Actually, it's not a 700. This is a, six, a 645. That's right. 645 on this one here. Let's see. If I disconnect that there, can I uh, sneak out here? And I thought I said disconnect. There we go. It's a track machine. Hey, there we go. I'll be doing this with a wheeled machine. At least uh, not if I had any uh, sort of duels on it anyway. Yeah, climb up a little embankment there. Yeah, the farmyard was not as flat as I thought it was when I put these uh, buildings down, unfortunately. Oh, well. Like I said, I don't think we better pull the big horse here uh, with this uh, tractor. We'll, uh, we'll just grab the small one here for starters. We're only planting the small field anyway. Flexi coil will do the job. Oh, and I should uh, mention as well, in between episodes, Evan... Uh, in case you can't tell here from the money, i.e. we ran out of money here in between episodes. Kind of suspected that was going to happen here. Uh, again, with all the uh, money we lost, I'm just going to be honest, I should probably be cheating in several hundred thousand dollars just with the uh, messing around I was doing here. Uh, buying uh, CN spray equipment that didn't obviously, unfortunately, end, end, end up working. So yeah, we definitely lost a few hundred thousand dollars on that. I mean, that, that was kind of uh, disappointing. I didn't do anything about uh, cheating money back and forth, but uh, to be honest, I probably really should. Uh, oh, yeah, we need to switch that. I want to do, 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 oh, so there we go. Okay, should be good on everything else. Plant oats on this field here. Uh, let's see, don't need course by at the moment. Close that so we can see where we're planting here a little bit better. I know, such a small little planter. One, uh, or this whole planter is probably about the size of one of the wings there on the, uh, the Pergo planter, right? 
I don't remember how wide this particular toolbar is here again, but I don't know. Is that a 60 footer probably? I'm going to guess 60. Could be wrong. I mean, don't quote me on that number, but uh, the go there is what, 100? I think that is a 100 foot planner if I remember correctly. Definitely for the big fields. Uh, and speaking of big fields, by the way, will we be uh, planting soybeans with that one? Probably not. We'll probably uh, use our row crop planters for the uh, soybeans. Uh, and at least uh, for this season, we'll probably stick with the row crop planters we have. But we'll have to see once. Maybe uh, maybe next year in game, everyone. And and I think we'll probably do at least one more year on this map. At least that's what I'm kind of thinking here at this point, Evan. We'll see once where we end up. But if we do one more year, maybe uh, next year we'll have to look at uh, maybe upgrading to some larger planters, i.e., you know, 48 rows or something like that. Uh, again, this is definitely one of the maps where I, I feel like we can take advantage of some of this larger equipment, Evan. So far, most of the maps I would argue that I have played on up until this point, Evan, the, the large equipment just uh, it, it's too big for most of the maps I've played on. Um, the the big Burgo Cedars, you know, the big, uh, just all that big equipment. 48 row planners, Evan. I'm in sure. Can I run a 48 row planner on some of them? Yeah. <laughs> Make two passes and you're done, right? Not that I'm complaining about that. Just uh, seems a little bit big for some of the maps. This map, on the other hand, Owen, yes, this is definitely the map for running large, large equipment. And so far, this map seems to be playing pretty well, but even with the uh, changes I made to some of these fields here, I am noticing, uh, speaking of changes of the fields here, probably really should, like, update the precision farming map here. How much would it cost to purchase the soil information? 100,000. Eh, you know what? No. I mean, that sounds nice and all, but nah, I think we'll pass. Probably just means we're putting on extra fertilizer here or something, I'm guessing. It's definitely, uh, it's definitely taking the fertilizer, so how much it's taking, I don't know. I'm not exactly sure how that works. I'm like, if you don't have, uh, the soil map, like, what, uh, does it just put down a predetermined amount of fertilizer? You know, if we actually paid attention, I mean, it probably actually tells us. Yeah, you know, minor details. Okay, I think this uh, side of the field is somewhat straight here, hopefully. Yeah, if we, uh, well, okay, it's kind of hard to tell with the overlay there of them, but uh, we are putting down fertilizer at the moment. Looks like we're putting down about 100 kilos per acre. definitely see it getting applied. I'll have to pay attention. We get to this uh, front section here, Evan. Uh, again, of course, we made some uh, significant modifications to the uh, fields here this time around, Evan. Just, again, trying to smooth them out. Not that I really had anything wrong with the uh, field shapes and sizes before, Evan. Just, uh, course play didn't like them. And so far, uh, course play has been uh, generating the courses much, much quicker. I mean, this field, uh, field 388 there, Evan almost instant with the uh, course play generation rates here at this point so that is kind of nice you know rather than waiting you know 15 20 minutes right for any uh, folks that are uh, playing along on this map and you're using course play i'm sure you've probably noticed that as well unless you've uh changed the, the shape of the field that one uh the course play generating times on some of these fields is uh yeah it, it's kind of ugly some of these fields really take a long time to generate course by courses. But like I said, if you smooth them out like I have, everyone, significantly better. Like a night and day difference at this point, everyone. Okay, at this point, we're into the section of the field here that, uh, well, we don't have the uh, data on, so... Oh, and it doesn't actually tell us either, does it? Like... I mean, obviously, I mean, if you look at the fertilizer number, the fertilizer number is going down, so it is putting fertilizer down here. Well, at least hopefully, anyway. According to the fact that it's going down, it is. But yeah, if you look at the information, I mean, it's not putting any fertilizer down, is it? Which actually is not, you know, it's kind of weird because that's technically not true of I mean, Like, it is putting fertilizer down. It's just, it's not telling us how much at what rate. Seems kind of weird. I think you just, like, show the default rate at that point. But 
Nope, I guess that's not the way Giants does it. Thinking we'll probably uh, do this field and then the uh, field that's currently being uh, cultivated in oats, that one. Uh, so, what was the numbers on this? 387, 388. We'll probably do oats on these fields. Uh, I don't know, maybe what? Sorghum out here? Corn on 386? Oh, we got 385 too. Yeah, maybe we'll put the oats on 385 then too. We'll see once here. Plant a little here, plant a little there. Um, anyway, also, uh, going back to the money thing like I was talking about here a few moments ago, I realized I never uh, finished that uh, conversation here. I did end up uh, taking out another $1 million loan. I think I'll well just, you know, just take out another million, right? That one. That way we got enough to uh, hire workers, plant them. We've already used like almost 50,000 of that. We're down to 957 here already. So we are uh, we are going through the money. And most of that money... Actually, most of that money is probably just hired workers. I mean, because I'm not actually... Yeah, I don't think I've actually done any planting up until this point. So it's just the hired workers running. Uh, so you're again running two uh, chisel plows over on the big section there. And then we're running the big tractor over on 388 there, cultivating. So yeah, that's a, that's a big chunk of money right there, that one. Big chunk of money. Oh well, got to spend money to make money. Isn't that what they say, right? Let's of course do the government, and then... Uh, you know, instead of uh, spending money to make money, you know, the government, you just, uh, you just collect it. You know, the government, you just uh, say, everyone give us 50%, and uh, guess what? You gotta give them 50%, right? Oh, speaking of tax, Evan. Well, and speaking of taxes, by the way, going to uh, the, the discussions we have a lot of times on the live streams, Evan. So just a reminder there for the live streams, if you'd like to uh, join us in on the RDL live streams, you can find that information down below in the uh, description there. We're getting into all kinds of topics on the live streams, Evan. Uh, I'm, I'm sure taxes have come up you know, a few times. Um, yeah, lots of topics. We, we cover all the topics here. So again, just again, a reminder, if you'd like to uh, join us in on the RDL live streams, Evan, information down below in the uh, description there. Uh, you're welcome to join us in on the RDL and multiplayer farming simulator server as well. Uh, again, we ask that you join us in on the RDL and TeamSpeak server. Again, that RDL and TeamSpeak server information is down below in the description. Anyway, going to my what I was going to talk about the taxes, Evan. It always uh, amazes me how many uh, people think, uh, like when it comes to, uh, obviously we're in the tax season right now, one. Uh, tax day is, uh, I think next week or this weekend or somewhere in there, but I think it's actually next, uh, next Monday, I'd like to say, as of the time I'm recording this. So yes, got to have your, uh, taxes done. And speaking of getting taxes done, you know, some people obviously end up, uh, paying more in, but then if you're uh, lucky enough, you might get a refund. And then of course there's, uh, those folks out there that, uh, think they've actually got enough of a refund that the government is actually paying them. It's like, yeah, sorry to break it to you there, pal. There, there's no such thing as uh, you're getting money back from the government. You're getting your money back. You just don't realize how much you pay in taxes. It's, uh, yeah. If you, if everyone actually knew how much you paid in tax, that one, uh, there would definitely be a serious revolt in this uh, country. The, uh, the government has done a very good job at uh, hiding the taxes you pay. And if folks think yeah, I'm wrong on this, just start uh, start uh, taking a look and adding up what you actually pay in taxes. Uh, especially the ones you don't actually even know about. A lot of that, the uh, taxes you don't even know about that you pay. I mean, that's, uh, yeah. Government's very, very sneaky on that one. Oh, did I miss plowing a section here? Wow. How's that even possible? And I don't remember seeing that before either. Must have missed, uh, missed plowing a little section there or something. Well, 
Well, I think we'll do. I'm going to finish this little headland pass here. We'll go back to the opposite end there. We got a nice uh, straight uh, GPS line we can start following. And we'll start uh, working from that end of the field. Could go all the way to the uh, round again. I'm about to uh, two headlands. That should be more than enough here for uh, this field. Uh, and not to mention, too, I mean, at least on this map here, uh, and there might be a few minor exceptions, but for the most part, there's plenty of room on the edges of these fields to turn around, like, off the field. Like, you know, if I have to turn around and I can't turn around on the field well, I mean, look at all the space from this edge of the field all the way to the tree line there. I mean, if I needed it, we could uh, turn around. don't think we'll need that much, but uh, you never know, right? Oh, that lowers quickly, doesn't it? I'm used to the, uh, been working with the plows here quite a bit lately. I've been in those uh, land all plows. Um, tend to lower a little bit on the slow side. So, like, when you go to lower them, you want to you wanna lower them quite a bit ahead if you're moving. Because otherwise it will, not, uh, it will not lower in time. Anyway, let's see if I can uh, load up some uh, comments here. I'm going to start uh, reading comments, see what you folks had to say here for last episode. And as a reminder here again, always enjoy reading all you folks' comments. So if you got something to say, don't forget to uh, throw it down below there. Like I said, always enjoy reading all you folks' comments. And also don't forget to, if you haven't already, click that uh, subscribe button. I would, uh, encourage you to, to do that as well. Always helps uh, support the channel. Don't forget, too, if you like the video, you know what to do, Evan. Give her the old thumbs up. Always very much appreciated. Okay, with all that uh, advertising of the channel out of the way, Evan, let's head over to the uh, comment section here. Starting off with the first one here from Christopher. He was saying, please tell me a favor and turn down, uh, turn it on. Okay, I think he's asking me to turn down the motor on the case. I'm not so sure if I'm going to try to read the rest of that comment. <laughs> I think you got like a word or two that's maybe mixed up in there. But anyway, regardless, uh, sounds like he wants me to turn down the motor sound on the case IH. It's too uh, loud because I can't even hear you. I don't know. Maybe, that might be, that's a good thing. Maybe folks don't want to hear me. But yes, I, I, I do agree with you there, Christopher. I've noticed that as well. That case tractor one is very loud over there. Um, just, yeah, I don't, it's a loud tractor. I, I think I've noted that before. So I have to remember that if I'm in that tractor, I'll have to turn down the, uh, game sound there just so you folks can hear me. Or at least if I'm in the cab, it's not so bad. But, uh, yeah, outside of the cab, I mean, that is a very noisy tractor. I don't know if the, uh, mod author tried to make that sound like real life or just, I don't know. Not sure what they were trying to do with that one. Oh, speaking of what's here, uh, next comment here from uh, Norton, Evan. Uh, Norton was saying, hopefully the John Deere is quieter, too. Well, of course it'll be there, Norton. It's a John Deere. Everything's better about John Deere. It's just like everyone knows, John Deere never breaks down, Evan. So, of course it'll be a great tractor. You know, again, I know I keep mentioning this, but I, I, I've got to mention this here again because it, it still uh, baffles me a little bit that uh, if you look at the uh, tractors that both John Deere and Case released, Evan, uh, Case obviously releasing their new quad track, the Case 715 quad track, only 715 rated horsepower. And of course, it does boost high, Evan, but still, it was it 7, 790 or 780? I think it was like 780 something, right? Was the boosted. You know, so we're not over 800 on that one. Or, again, rated horsepower, 715, right, everyone? And it also takes depth. Okay, you know, 715 horsepower tractor, pretty good. Not Nothing wrong with that, I guess. But then you go over and look at the competition, everyone. Uh, you look at the, the John Deere quad track, everyone. You know, the John Deere quad track, we're topping out at uh, 830 rated horsepower. You know, the boost is up near 900 almost. You know, so we're, we're looking at uh, almost, you know, yeah, I guess not quite 200 more horsepower, but uh, quite a bit more horsepower than the, the case, right? And then not to mention the John Deere doesn't have DAF either, so I'm like, whoa. I find that uh, find that rather interesting, that one.
this goes back to the uh, question I keep asking here, one. Uh, was John Deere actually able to pull a fast one on everyone? And everyone thought their new tractor was going to be 690 horsepower. Good for those who don't uh, follow the news here. Up until uh, John Deere's announcement of their new tractors, everyone, uh, all the rumors for the new tractor was a John Deere 9RX 690. The rumors were all John Deere 9RX 690. And of course, I mean, if you look at the numbers there, John Deere 9RX 690 K715, those are right about what I would expect to see, everyone. But then uh, John Deere kind of uh, surprised everyone. At least I think everyone seemed to be surprised anyway. Uh, turns out there is no John Deere 690, at least not, not that I know of yet anyway. Uh, maybe they've got one in their back pocket they're working on yet too, but... Uh, Turns out, you know, their big horse was actually uh, John Deere 9RX 830, right? Plus the other uh, two sides as well, of course, but. Still makes me wonder about what is Case going to do. I know I keep asking this, but. I find it hard to believe that uh, Case is just going to let uh, John Deere beat them by over 100 horsepower with a tractor that doesn't have def. So what, is, oh, what does Case have up their sleeve? Or did uh, John Deere really bamboozle them that good that uh, Case doesn't actually have anything up their sleeve at this point? Oh, makes a pretty good progress on this uh, field here. Oh, let's see what's here. I think we can uh, finish planting this here by the end of this episode. It'll be close, that one. Oh, if we'd used the uh, big planter, we probably could have had that uh, this field all planted. Like I said, I don't know if the uh, old uh, T9645 would have pulled that or not, though. Uh, keep in mind, when uh, New Holland says T9645, that's not actually 645 horsepower. I don't know if he would boost the 645 on this one, that one. I think uh, New Holland, whenever they uh, put their model numbers on here, but I think they'd like to use their boosted numbers. Plus, you know, maybe when you're out there pushing it, uh, that's probably where you get that number from. So, like, the T9700, I mean, the T9700 is not actually, like, a 700 horsepower tractor. I think it tops out only, like, 650 or something like that. It's not much larger than, you know, the current uh, case quad track. Um, anyway, next comment here from Birdman. Uh, you can use that, I think. It's a uh, John Deere 2410 plow. Uh, looks like a cultivator, but it is a plow. And it is 54 feet wide. Uh, he was saying, I farm sections 291, 268, 269. Uh, you just bought, and I bought the section to the left of that. Uh, 300 over to 303. Plowing that all up as well. Let's, let's go check them after. See once what... Uh... Okay, so he has... 268, 269. Where's 268? 268, 269 is down there. Okay. And he also says uh, 300 to 303. I wonder where... Uh, okay, so he's farming all that. Now, just out of curiosity there, Burn Man, if you're watching this, uh, are you, like, plowing up this entire section? Or are you just making, like, uh, the fields that are here into a field? Or are you going to farm this entire square mile? I don't know what that land looks like over there, so I don't know if it's even possible or not, but... From what I've seen on most of this map, Evan, like, if you want to make these fields larger, you certainly can. Now, uh, again, I have no plans on doing that from what, uh, other than what we've done so far, one. And, and again, my plans have just been to, like, smooth the fields out to make course play generation quicker and easier. That's been my main goal, I'm not really looking to make the fields bigger. <laughs> They're big enough the way they are, if you ask me. Plus, I'm trying to, you know, stick with uh, the, the theme of the map as well. And again, I know the mod author, at least in my opinion, probably didn't do this map justice. And that's probably because it's a 36 axe map. I mean, the size of the map is, uh, it is what it is, you know. But it would have been cool on, you know, if the map author would have taken the time. Like, again, looking at this map, I mean, it looks like this is probably a wet area here. 
I'm just making a guess, Kevin. I don't really know. You know, you can't tell, right? But it would be cool if there actually was a wet area here. Uh, next comment. Uh, Hetero saying, unfortunately, the 2410 is used as a plow instead of being a cultivator. But that being said, it is the biggest plow on the Mod Hub. Over 10 hours to plow the field. Bring your lunch. Oh, that is right there, Hetero. Again, I mean, keep in mind, when we say 10 hours to plow that field, I mean, actually, I think it's closer to 11. And, and by the time we're actually done, it might even be longer. I don't know. But, uh, you know, 10 hours to plow that field, that is 10 real-life hours, I mean, like 10 real-life hours. And we're running two plows, I mean. So that is uh, over 20 hours worth of work being done there. Now we're running two, so hopefully we'll get it done in 10 or probably like 11, 12, 13, somewhere in there really. But RC Wind was saying, uh, yeah, same thing as a couple other people here. Uh, the K715 looks and sounds good. However, we can't hear you. Oh, you folks are complaining about not being able to hear me. Well, I'll just have to turn myself up, won't I? Uh, Mason uh, saying the same thing. Uh, really hard to hear you over the K715 quad track. Hit the uh, cancel when you are done copying the course play course. Am I still? Oh, yeah, no, I don't think it's actually in the copy mode anymore. I've seen that 715 in real life, and the hood is wider than the guy with the largest wingspan. That 715 also has a real dashboard where you can change the screen with the numbers on it to match bushels and pounds and pounds per bushel using the key combo. And it says in the help menu, instead of seeing leaders, uh, oh, okay, I'll have to check that out. Remember that. That's cool. Yes, and, and I've, I've said that, uh, was it last episode? I think it was last episode we were talking about that. I mean, if you look at the uh, sizes of the hoods on these new tractors, they're just like, yo, know, looking at the new Holland, I mean, you know, pretty typical of what we see in the current tractors, right? Then you go look at the Case and the John Deere, same story, but they're just like, wow. You know, bigger motors, right, Evan? Bigger motors. Uh, in particular, I think it's probably more cooling. You know, it's, I mean, uh, the motor itself might not necessarily be that much bigger. Uh, it's that much more cooling that is being required for that motor. So more, more radiators, right? If folks ever look at the uh, radiators that are stacked up on the front of these tractors nowadays. It's just like, oh, my goodness. Radiator after radiator after cooler after cooler, Evan. There's... They're just stacking them radiators, radiators up in there. And of course, it's not just engine, everyone. You're talking, of course, you got the engine, but then you got uh, hydraulic coolers and you got air conditioning and transmission coolers and oil coolers. And it's like, uh, oh my goodness. Now, obviously very important to keep those uh, clean if you can. Uh, to Quito Attic, Quito, uh, Quito Attic, I think I said that right. Uh, North Dakota native here. Yes, those lines are definitely wind brakes and or shelter brakes. Uh, the single line belts were planted a lot back in the drought years from the 1980s. Uh, the gaps in the lines are often where the tree saplings didn't survive those first few years. Those shelter belts are reaching the end of their lifespan nowadays since they were planted with relatively short lifespan trees elm trees for example uh, removing them is now a significant problem for a lot of farmers oh uh, okay now when you say removing them is a significant problem do you, do you mean like you're not allowed to remove them or they're just a lot of work to remove obviously you know getting trees out of any field that one you got the tree itself but then you also got like all the roots and stuff that go along with it as well I, I'm very curious as to how well those windbreaks ever work because, uh, you know, again, just the way they looked, again, as a reminder, I'm going to hit 291 here, and there's a couple other ones scattered throughout that field there. Had what I actually guess, I guess I guessed correctly, were windbreaks. I mean, I didn't know what else they'd be. Didn't make sense for windbreaks because it's like a single row of trees that's mostly missing, which according to the Tito attic here makes sense, right? Trees just either never grew or they died off over the, over the years. 
Yeah, it just doesn't seem like they work real well. It seems like you need, like, several rows of trees all on the line to have produce a better windbreak. But, I don't know. What do I know, right, everyone? Anyway, speaking of what I know, it is time to wrap it up here this episode. So, on that note, you folks have any comments or questions, be sure to uh, leave them down below. And, as always, Evan, thanks for watching. Until next time.